Alrighty, yeah, um, normally as, as you know I don't um, uh, record from this angle, but this is about uh, the Russian uh, bit, and yeah, I know it's the Central Powers move right now, but I was mentioning in the live stream one of the wonderful things I like about solo play, I mean, uh, well, I like it all, but uh, one nice thing about the solo play bit is I can, you know, switch sides for a little while and, and, and focus on what are the plans for the Russians eventually? Uh, hold on, I just gotta clean my glass. Uh, I don't know what the hell I screwed up the left uh, glass, uh, reading glass thing. So anyways, the green dots are, are I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, I don't want to start going all over the place, but the reason being is I kind of do want to zoom in a little bit. It's to hopefully show you, and I did want to do the overhead camera because I wasn't sure if the overhead webcam would actually show you the reason why I'm trying to look at it from the Russian perspective and also weave it in yet again with the narrative of how long it's taking them for them to react to what has happened in 01 November. Because like I said, there's a huge change of uh, leadership going on. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Yuri Danilov is now uh, who used to be the quartermaster general and for some reason was called the Black Danilov. I'll have to, f I haven't figured out why. Um, so he'll, he's now in charge of everything in this entire theater. Um, so there's no more Zelensky, there's no more, um, oh shoot, I've got the, the um, Ivanov, uh, no uh, Yaniskevich, um, well we know Samsonov's gone. Uh, I've now moved Anatoly Rosenshield's going to be taken over for 3rd Army and 8th Army once it gets completely reconstituted over the ha uh, over here. Um, but, I, you know, for now, right now, what I'm going to try, um, you know, like I said, the Russians, um, well, this has all been done. So they they know for a fact, at least uh, at least from a, from a player's perspective, I can start figuring out what the heck to do with the Russians this way. So, if, like, uh, I will try to get Brusilov over here to Stanislaw, uh, what else, uh, and you know, and try to move uh, these guys to, I mean, these guys are probably screwed, but at least to hopefully use them as enemy zone or control slowdown to try to get Brusilov on the, on the Army HQ, because that's a lot of demoralization points regardless, and get them out of here and just move. So all this green dots, all these green things are trying to show you what I'm hoping for in the new strategy, if you want to look at it that way, is this is where I'm hoping, hoping that this is going to be the new front uh, over winter time. Uh, so you can, and let's look at it from, let's take a look at this from a whole point of view, okay? Let's, what have they lost Russians wise right now? So they've lost, basically they're going to lose all of uh, Western Poland here, gone. Uh, and there, this is this is the concerning bit, right? Uh, I would say right here, right up against uh, Romania, uh, and uh, eventually here you're getting towards the coast of Odessa and the Black Sea over there. Um, so this is all gone. So this is the big, huge chunk. This is why I'm I'm stopping here with this green line here. There's a massive double rail line all along here. So we're gonna try and fortresses. So I'm trying to now link up, and I'm sorry, this is just a bizarre way of, uh, well, not a bizarre way, it's just, this is the way things work. If Bruderman had not been so effective with the Berevich dictum over here, and uh, crushing basically two armies, the 8th and the 3rd army, it's over with, let's be honest. If this had not been so successful, I don't think uh, the Russians would be looking, which is what I started doing. I was like, holy smokes, I have to start figuring out a way of contracting the front massively because they're outflanking us everywhere here. And then it's going to be like two, uh, we're, we'd be beyond screwed. That's when I saw these fortresses and they went as for the Russians. And I went, okay, you know what? We've got to start bringing these, why I have these green arrows here. I have to start figuring out of uh, bringing troops and linking up these fortresses as my... I know they don't have enemy zones of control, but they certainly got strength points sitting there. Can help me out. I don't have to retreat and so on and so forth. I have to start streaming troops here and from here because I, I don't know how that, you know, there are only replacement units, but this is what we have to start doing. Uh, troops this way, troops that way, linking up. 
And guess what? That's extremely bad news for Operation Luther. This is exact op uh, This is exactly what we didn't want to have happen. But guess what? If this hadn't been so successful, I would not have seen this as the Russians. This is the way I'm playing it out because I'm like, okay, we have to contract. And the way I got to contract as well is start to link things up. So we're going to link up this way, hopefully. But like I said, it, it's gotta, we just got to wait. Uh, wait out the storm which is you know still gonna happen here contract here goodbye and i'll tell you one thing about um uh salsa here in the fourth army he's probably in a weird way on random camp as well um probably been the most effective you know weird cocky sneaky way uh because remember his original uh, objective was krakow way the heck back there and he was like okay i will but doesn't mean i have to engage uh that was fourth army over there no, First Army was over there. Uh, I don't have to engage them. Uh, I don't have to. I mean, you just told me that was my objective, and that's what they did. He he snunk. Uh, remember, he, he was uh, s uh, slicking around uh, um, uh, Danita over here, and and so on and so forth, and then just got the hell back. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to bring the uh, the Fourth Army is going to have to come back towards here. So you can. I'm sorry, but. Uh, Kjeltz is gone. Uh, that's it. There's no way in hell. But we're going to try as hard as we can to keep uh, Radim and use the big uh, the Vistula up towards here as it starts pouring towards the Baltic. Uh, it's now a major river. Use that entire spot. I'm trying to look at the train. None of this is specific yet, but I'm just already looking and I'm like, okay, what do we have to save here? we got to save these rail lines, man. This is nuts. And we've got lots of intricate, intricate little uh, rivers here and a lot of uh, crazy terrain. I have to remind myself that they can't do everything as well. I know it looks scary from a, the Russian perspective. I'm like, but you've got to remember, Chris, they can't do everything all the time. And they've also, they also have to worry about uh, logistical issues if they start stretching out. Which is ironic, because uh, what I was reading about this week, uh, 1915, as the Russians were pouring towards, they were, you know, like, uh, towards, uh, through here, um, the Uzak Pass and whatnot, that was one of their issues. They also were starting to run into inhospitable terrain and logistical issues, and then, of course, the Germans showed up and stopped them dead, dead in their tracks, and then... And away we go for later on, which is about to happen in just a couple of months' time, which is the uh, um, uh, the Galitza time of breakthrough or the Great Retreat. Okay, so that's it. So uh, and these guys, uh, whatever is left, I have no effing clue. And poor Anatoly Rosenshield, but he's got to contract towards here. Uh, I think this is Kovno? No, Ravno, sorry. And, um, yeah, it's, what is it? Ravno, Grodno, Kodno. And... Um, uh, try to contract back here. So what have they lost? Uh, well, they've gained territory in East Prussia. They've lost all of, uh, of Western and Southern Poland. Uh, they've more or less kept this intact. This is, you know, it's been an interesting uh, uh, front here along the sand. And, uh, and then here they've lost a huge, ch uh, huge swath. But if they can just, like I said, wait out the storm a bit, ride it out over, over the winter, uh, hunker down and uh, get ready for spring. I don't know what else to do and then uh, have to say a lot of uh, interesting things uh, towards the Entente because I'm going to now start weaving this into the Grand Campaign bit and I've, like which is absolutely flipping wonderful. I've also been reading up uh, this week uh, one of the other books there um, I was mentioning to you guys the uh, it was it's the last one there on the um, uh, the summation strategy and whatnot of World War One and, and they're talking about the leaders and so on and so forth and and right now I just finished reading up on the German generals, so they were talking about uh, Joffre and Frosch and so on and so forth. Really cool stuff. Um, you know what I mean? I gotta, all those intentions are now starting to weave in and oh my, woof. Yep, okay. Now I get to take uh, these green things off and now switch over to the Central Powers. Aha. Okay, hope you're having a great Saturday.